Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Friday. It is the third day of September, year of our Lord, 2021. I do pray this finds you well this evening. Kind of a cloudy day, cool today. I broke the sweatshirt out today. North Dakota State University I picked this up at the Higher Things Conference back in June. I'd never been to Fargo. I've been through Fargo, but never spent any time in Fargo. That's where North Dakota State University is. Absolutely lovely campus. Just really a very, very nice campus. Although that was June. Maybe it's a little different in January, but North Dakota is a beautiful state. You gotta, you gotta be one of those Northerners. You gotta, you gotta like the cold. Uh, but it is a beautiful state, beautiful people, uh, interesting outlook on life. And Fargo is a pretty happening little town. I was very impressed. It shares the border with Minnesota. I think Moorhead is on the other side that's in, uh, of the Red River. Uh, anyway, this is North, my North Dakota State University. I did not realize that there's quite a few NFL players come out of this university. They have quite a, quite a football program. Uh, the Bisons uh, is their nickname. So this is my, uh, not Green Bay colors, but my North Dakota State University colors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And I'm going to continue where we left off last night, continuing along the daily lectionary. And last night we read Ephesians chapter 2, albeit a little bit late. Today I will read for you in its entirety, according to the Daily Lectionary, the New Testament reading assigned for this day, Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, Though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And that is the word of the Lord. Now this is really, in chapter 3, really gets to the heart of the letter. We're going to hear more about this in chapter 4. Remember, Paul didn't put in these chapter and verse numbers. But we hear this begin with, for this reason. Then he goes into this little side argument, gets back we, uh, halfway through the chapter and verse, well, over halfway through the chapter in verse 14, when he says again, for this reason I bow my, my knee. So he goes, he takes this little detour, but really kind of explaining, and I think sort of tipping us off to what he thinks the issues are, what he's not, what he knows, what we think, but what he knows the issues are in Ephesians, and that is there's some tension between the the Jews by birth, uh, you know, the, the, the people of the diaspora, the, the, the people who built the synagogues, and then those who are grafted in, the Gentiles. And we see the word mystery repeated. Now, mystery is used a couple of different ways in the New Testament, even by Paul himself. Sometimes he's referring to the sacraments, but here he's not. Here he's talking about the mystery of the fact that what God intended from the very beginning is for everybody. 
He set the nation of Israel apart to protect the covenant, the, the, the promise of the Christ. To And I think that sometimes, and this is just my opinion, I think the New Testament church functions in this way in, in some aspects as well. That we are the keeper, and it shouldn't take much logic on anybody's part to sort of think, yeah, that sort of makes sense. But you know, we keep this covenant so we can give it up, we, but we have to keep it pure, otherwise we don't have much to give. Uh, and we could talk about the Sermon on the Mount, which is one of my favorite go-tos in these sort of discussions. We won't worry about it now, but this mystery. The mystery is, is that this is for everybody. And you can imagine, if you think about it from how, how disconcerting it might have been, it almost certainly was, in the first century when the Jews had the purity laws and a devout Jew it would do those. And in come the Gentiles, you know, who are eating the bacon. Who are, and a lot of the issues do surround food. You know, uh, you know Paul's, attack, uh, Paul's concern with Peter, really it's a, it's a, I don't want to use the word attack, that's harsh, but his rebuke of Peter is Peter, you know, when, when the Jew shows up, he doesn't want to eat with the Gentiles anymore because, you know, uh, he might be eating unclean food. Uh, eating is a huge thing to a Jew. What, what is pure, what isn't pure, you know, kosher, the kosher laws, the purity laws, and other things as well. But this eating comes up over and over again in, in some of the ancient writings. The people who deal with the Jews, the, uh, the extra biblical, extra um, Israelite writings, it's sort of fascinating uh, that, uh, how their food is sort of singled out, their weird dietary practices. And we think about that today. I mean, I have Jewish friends, you know, and, and you're very cognizant of what you serve them if they come into your house, you know, uh, because you don't want to offend them. Um, and we as Christians can eat anything. So anyway, you can imagine how disconcerting it must have been to all of a sudden have these people come in who were not children of Abraham. They could not trace their lineage to Abraham. They could not, and yet they are, you know, by the voice of the apostles, one and the same. You know, they are, they are full members of the church. They're not partial members. They don't have to wait a few generations. They are, they are, they are and it's all the work of God. They are, they are baptized into the church. And, uh, you could see how that would create issues. I mean, we deal with that in certain ways in our church. You know how it goes. You know, if you've been a member of your church or life, you know, let's say you, you were a member that maybe didn't get involved that much in the life of the church. Okay, that, that's fine. You know, you're busy working, busy raising a family, and then these new people come, you know, and maybe they're new to the faith. You know, uh, maybe they were baptized when they were a kid, and they're just, you know, the, you know maybe their parents just kind of, you know, left it at that. And, and uh, but I do lots of uh, adult baptisms as well. And, uh, you know, you, you, there's always a little tension when they get involved in the life of the congregation. There are people who are just so excited about being the member, you know, member of something that you know, holds them as a family and sees them through the eyes of Christ that they want to give, and maybe they can give in that way. You know, so they volunteer for things and, and want to do things. And sometimes it's a little disconcerting for, yeah, you know, a little, I you know I'm using that word a lot, but it's, I think that's sort of the word that fits. It's troublesome. You know, oh, they're new, and I've, you know, I, I've been in the member of this church all my life. Well, thanks be to God for that, but thanks be to God for the new people, these new people coming in as well. So you see how we struggle with this as well. I mean, we're not quite in the same way, but there is that tension there, you know, about this is my church. Oh, no, no, it's God's church. And this is what Paul is going to get to in chapter 4. But he's making the point now, he's like, no, you know, the mystery, and this goes right back to Genesis. You know, the mystery is that through Abraham, all nations are going to be blessed meaning through Christ. You know, and this Christ is promised for everybody. We hear that in the second part of this. You know, as Paul gets back to the point, says, repeats himself, for this reason I bow my knee before the Father, to for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. That's for everybody. And the mystery is that Christ died for everybody, not for a certain few, but for everybody. Remember that in your dealings with your neighbors. They may get under your skin. You may not like them very much. You might have, you know, personality conflict. Our personalities don't mesh up with everybody. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means you just, you know, don't get along well. Fine. Um, but remember, Christ died for them. And Christ, like you, wants them to be with him forever. This is the mystery, that Christ died for everybody. And when somebody comes to the faith, when God brings somebody into the church, they are, bro they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, that's really a cool thing to see as a pastor when you see that happening. People who maybe spent their whole lives being hostile to the faith then come into the church. Re they repent, you know, and the Spirit brings them in through the church. And we hear that in here that uh, this happens through the church. Um, uh, uh, that, you know, the, the preaching of the gospel, the, the ba our baptism, our celebration of the Lord's Supper, that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to everybody, you know, the rulers, the authorities, all of us, uh, the evil powers, everybody knows that, okay, Christ died for everybody. And it's really a remarkable thing. So this is the mystery Paul speaks of here. 
uh, and he's going to unpack this how this mystery comes to us and how he can say this so boldly and so forcefully and that's going to be what we'll hear lord willing tomorrow night let's confess our faith using the words of the apostles creed i believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers on behalf of those who have no voice, the unborn, the aged, who are maybe sitting alone, and now as our nursing homes begin to close again uh, uh, and people are shut off from the visitation of pastors and family members, we do pray that you keep these people um, from falling into loneliness and despair and that uh, you take this pandemic from us quickly. Um, please, Heavenly Father. But hear our prayers on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. We ask you to protect the unborn. Uh, use us as your people to uh, hold our leaders accountable for those who disregard life and help us be a voice for life in our communities. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for the new life that you've given, given to the world and protect mothers and their children, fathers and their children, um, and uphold them. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for the gift of marriage, especially this day, the gift of marriage that you have bestowed upon Jacob and Natalia. Bless their union, not just this day, but all the days ahead that uh, they may, as they live in your love and forgiveness, uh, uh, bear wonderful fruit, not just in if you bless them with children, but in their lives together. Heavenly Father, be with those who travel. Guide them safely to their destinations and guide them home to those whom they love. Heavenly Father, be with those who are crying out to you for healing especially friends of our congregation, Jason, Willie, Tony, Megan, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ, especially Len and Jack. We ask you to be with them as they cry out to you and all who cry out to you. Be with the nurses and doctors that care for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being. In all things, give them your peace that through your church they are made your children and heirs to everlasting life. We continue to pray for those affected by these horrible storms, especially Storm uh, Ida, that you'd uh, keep those who are without power and food and maybe uh, at risk, keep them safe and allow rescue workers to get to them. Bless the efforts of the re rescue workers and the recovery workers that um, at least the basics of life may be restored. And be with those of our synod uh, who work so hard, our, our disaster relief people, as they work so hard to... Uh, get aid uh, uh, to these places quickly. Bless them in their efforts. And again, we ask you to be with uh, our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. It is very bad for those who confess your holy name. Surround them with your mighty angels, keeping them steadfast in their faith until that day they stand before your throne. And if it, even if it be your will that they be taken from this life, may their death be a witness to those around them. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Just a reminder, you know, as we talked about Ephesians, that you can join us either via Zoom or in person on Sunday mornings, both at 8 o'clock and then after church. As we are currently in the midst of a more in-depth discussion of, of Ephesians. It's Tuesday mornings. You can join us online or uh, in person. To, that's at 9.30 to study the Song of Solomon. And then very soon we'll be studying the Tuesday night Bible study. We're going to continue our study of the Lutheran Confessions. We're just reading through those and having some time to discuss. You can come in person at, at church or all these are available by Zoom. Youth group, which will not be available by Zoom, will be starting a week from this coming Sunday. So not this Sunday. A lot of people are scattered this weekend, but a week from this coming Sunday. Remember, 6.30 to 8.30 every Sunday night. Uh, we'll take a break for Christmas and things like that. But every Sunday night, we want to get our kids in the habit of coming. I'll take the first hour. This The first week will be a little bit different. We'll be introducing the youth leaders. We're going to ask the parents to stay for a while to get to know the youth leaders and, and kind of what we plan to do and uh, what we plan on doing. And I think once in a while, like once a month, I'm planning to have the adults come anyway. And I will teach the kids and then teach the adults um, uh, and, and, have, and answer some of their questions and things like that. There's some things I realize, you know, as I'm teaching the kids, this would be good for moms and dads and, and guardians to know uh, for their children as well. So uh, that starts uh, a week from this coming Sunday. Um, we keep keep us in your prayers. This is kind of new and it's uh, kind of involved. Anybody's welcome to come uh, from like confirmation age to senior high, uh, through senior high. Anybody's welcome to come. If you have questions about whether your kids should come or not, just, just give me a shout out. Um, Obviously, if they're too young, a lot of the stuff will go over their heads that I'm going to try to teach. I'm going to kind of teach at a higher level. That's okay. We'll bring the kids up. They need to hear it. So, okay. So with all that said, I'm going to sing 683, Jesus, Thy Boundless Loved Me. Hopefully, I'm going to sing it. I, You know, there's a couple of hymns that sound similar to this. So, uh, um, I think I have the melody in my head. I, of course, I practiced before I turned this all on. This is a Paul Gerhardt hymn. You've heard me mention him a number of times. We have a number of his hymns. Uh, Suffered Greatly. For the faith, he died in 1676, but a phenomenal pastor and hymn writer. So this is, again, stanza one. There are four altogether of 683. Jesus, thy boundless love to me. Jesus, thy boundless love to me. No thought can reach, no tongue declare. Unite my thankful heart to thee and reign without a rival there. Thine holy, thine alone I am, be thou alone my constant flame. All right, that's stanza one. I don't think I butchered that too badly. Stanza one of 683, Jesus, thy boundless love, love to me. This is the promise. I didn't grow up Lutheran, and I grew up Roman Catholic, and so... Uh, a lot of these beloved Lutheran hymns, and that's one of them, are just not, you know, I, I, since I didn't grow up with them, I'm, they're, they're not part of the fabric of my being. Um, that's, that's not a knock. It's just, you know, one of my one of my shortcomings. Like, it's the knock for me. Um, so uh, your forgiveness is most welcome as I muddle through some of these hymns. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a very pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs>